coach uh, week zero, just uh, first practice back after a few days out the guys doing? We're all right. I mean, our scout team, you know, just, just new whenever you change stuff. So that's always a little frustrating. Just no matter how many times you do it, you always forget something. And uh, there's a couple of things I wish I'd have been a, a better head coach on today. Uh, so we're all right. Just some kids, you know, don't even like being on scout. I get it. And today was one of those days. So we are. Right. We'll get it fixed. We'll be better tomorrow. Jeff, we talked to Frank Harris over the weekend for media day stuff, and he was telling us about the different like preventative measures he takes to keep his body up and running at this stage of his career. How do you see him sort of approach that process day to day? Um, just like that. I mean, it's just a process for him. I mean, you know, he's got shoulder issues, knee issues. He's dealt with his whole career, and uh, so it's the physical part, and then there's the for him there's the psychological part of just being grateful every day. And he's a very spiritual kid as well, so. Those three components, he's uh, trying to balance it every day. And, and how many reps does he need to get ready? Because he wants to take every one of them. And I'm like, Frank, you don't need to take every rep, man. You've been starting for three years now. So just that balance. I didn't realize he was into like the cupping therapy and the acupuncture and stuff. Are you a believer in those kind of treatments and their benefit? Um, yeah, when you're 55 years old, you do whatever you can <laughs> to stay young. <laughs> We talked to Cam Alexander as well. It was interesting getting to hear from him a little bit. And he seems like a very confident player. Is that kind of the mentality and attitude that you see from him day to day? Yeah, he's a really good football player. That was a good take for us. And we expect him to step right in there and play like uh, our corners of the past have played. So we're excited about Cam. Coach, what uh, can you tell us about Houston, uh, kind of an early look at them? Um, well, you know, they just are who they are a little bit. I mean, Dane has been calling offenses forever. He's just a, a really good football coach. He's a great offensive mind that, uh, you know, I was a high school coach for a long time. He's one of the guys I always studied and have always watched. He's just very creative. And he always gets the ball to great players. And uh, I know he'll do it again. I dug defensively. Those guys play hard as heck. And they get lined up sound cor correctly. And they're, they're physical and run the football. They've always, they're always good at special teams, whether it's blocking or returning. Um, they do a good job with that. So you don't win 20 games in the last two years by not playing really good football. And, uh, they're in a similar situation. They're moving up to the Big 12, and we're moving up to the AAC. So I imagine, you know, he's going through some of the same things we are, just the growing pains of trying to get caught with the Big 12s. We're trying to get caught with the AAC. I think it looks like a lot of Roadrunner fans are headed over there next week. Uh, any idea what to expect from that environment? You know, as long as we've been here, those guys have traveled really well for us. And uh, it being in the game just three and a half hours away, I would imagine we'll see uh, hopefully a lot of orange and blue uh, amongst the red. With week zero, y'all guys don't have a game, but do y'all kind of treat it like a, like a bye week, like an extra week, or how do y'all handle not having a game this week? No, we treat it just like it's game week, mm -hmm. like uh, Saturday just be a mock game. Mm -hmm. you know, Friday will be a walkthrough. Uh, we're not going to the hotel Friday night, obviously. Um, I'd like to see Dr. Compost's face if I requested that on the old budget <laughs> list. Just to, we want to go to the hotel just to practice staying uh -huh. in the hotel. <laughs> I'd like to see how that would go over. <laughs> Jeff, what are some of the ways uh, Zay Frazier has improved as a player from last year to this year? What's different about him? Uh, his ability to take a butt you and I mean, just maturity. I mean, he gave up a play today, and Coach Crown just absolutely just lit into him. and You couldn't phase him. And he's just so much more mentally tough. And he's been through it. You know, he's a very highly rated recruit that has not seen the field very much yet. And uh, he's got length. He's got speed. He's got everything. He just got to get tough between those ears. And, that's the part I would say that's changed the most, just his ability to be, you know, tough for the ears. It seems like he and Nick Fortune are pretty close. Have you yeah. seen where that leadership dynamic has made a difference for him? No doubt. Nick's very solid, steady, and Nick's battled some of that. You know, when he came here, uh, he'll he'll openly confess to that that his, you know, Nick could give up a play and he'd be wanting to pull himself out of the game. And now Nick just lets the next play, you know, dictate not the last play. So. Um, it's just maturity, and that's that position is kind of like golf and basketball. You better forget about the last one pretty quick. Uh, so uh, he's done a great job. Nick's been a great influence on him, say.
Jeff wanted to ask you about the, the leadership uh, component of this team. I know every team's a little different, but how would you compare, you know, the group of leaders on this team to the last few years? We're, we're finding our way, you know. We've got a good veteran group returning, but when you lose Maka, who's kind of was the, you know, a leader on offense for sure, uh, you lose Adrian Taylor, uh, you know, Cliff, those, Corey, those guys are instrumental. Trevor Harmison, those are big voices over there for a long time. Uh, but that's going to take care of itself. And there's a lot of guys over there that are really good players, that are good people. And we're going to vote on Leadership Council Wednesday, and uh, and we'll we'll get a good pulse on that. I'll start to meet with those guys, you know, on Sunday nights, just kind of kind of guide them on uh, what I expect, because everybody thinks that being a leader means you're loud and you talk all the time. And that's that's communication is an important part of being a leader. But it's not the most important part. The most important part is do your actions match your words. I didn't realize until we talked to Tyke, he said he's playing with a little bit extra weight compared to last year. Has that changed him as a player at all? Um, you know, I don't know. I would imagine he's playing his way back into shape. I know he's slimmed down a little bit. I mean, he was like 240, 242 there for a moment. He's in the 220s right now, so we're getting closer. Him and Big Joe Evans, we got them on a, on a little, a little – our nutritionist, Jordan, has got them heavily monitored. And, and then uh, Dan Dishman was another one we, we checked Probably shouldn't have said heavily. That's, <laughs> that's mean, right? I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, it would, would have got right by me. But uh, So Dishman, he said uh, he's kind of got rid of some, I think he called them dumb mistakes that he made last year, kind of been maturing as a player. Do you see a difference in him one year to the next? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's talented. He's long. I mean, you said he made plays before. It's the mental part of the game. Um, it's just what I talked to them about. Every team in the country says they're going to win a conference championship. Every team in the country says they're going to be great this time of year. And yada, 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 yada. There's only a few people that really have the ability to freaking do it every day. That's in your business, my business. That's playing the game. It's hard. It's hard to be great. It's hard to be excellent. So that's that's it. I know winning the day sounds great, right? It's right behind us on that wall. It's cute as heck. But man, living that crap's hard. Being a champion every day. You got to be a champion before you're going to become a champion. I mean, you got to live it. You got to act it. You got to practice it. You got to rep it. And these guys are the best athletes in their class. They always have been. Since they've been in kindergarten, they've been picked first in the kickball game. Hell, I wasn't picked first. I was picked down there towards the bottom, right? So you got to become mentally tough pretty quick when you're just an average athlete. When you're the best athlete in your school your entire life, you're usually not mentally tough. You're just physically gifted, right? And that's where we got to get it most of these guys. It's just their, their mental out there, that six inch game. What's the uh, coach of predator this week and the message to the guys? Physical toughness. Uh, and, you know, that's never been a, a doubt with our teams. That's something we take a lot of great pride in. Uh, and we felt like last year, you know, we didn't run the, very, the ball very well against Houston. I mean, our tailbacks might have had 30 something yards. And our quarterback might have ran for 70 on some scrambles. So he's a heck of an athlete. But we couldn't block him last year. So, was that injuries or they just that much better than us? We'll find out again in about 12 days, I guess. But we didn't hold up our end of the deal on offense last year. And defensively, we played hard. But offensively, we did not. Uh, we couldn't win the ball last year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.